welcome back to the channel. In this video we'll be taking a look at creating organic house uh, in particular in the style of bonobo. All the methods and techniques that we're going over in this video are applicable in any doll, uh, so you can follow along whatever program you use. Anyway, let's jump into it. So I'll just begin as I usually do by taking a look at the drums. Uh, we can kind of break this down into three sections. Uh, so we've got the more electronic sound and samples, then we've got the, the more live drum hit sounds, and then finally we've got some folly recordings which will uh, layer up and blend together. So this is the beat as a whole. And this is the main part. So quite a straightforward beat. Um, I've got quite a punchy kick here. And then I layered that up um, with an actual uh, kick sound from the, the Free Labs uh, drum VST. Then just a, a wee stick. This is kind of like a, a lo-fi hip hop kind of snare. I find they actually sound pretty good in a lot of um, organic house. Make it sound a bit more old school. And then I also layered that up with another one which has got a bit more crack to it. And then a wee clap. Another. And finally a 707 hi-hat. And that was the basis um, for the whole drum beat. Everything else was just uh, based around that to fill in the gaps. So this is the hat loop that I got. I quite like this because it had a bit of uh, white noise and almost like vinyl crackle going on in it. As you can see, it kind of messed around with the, the pitch just to make it sound more sort of lo-fi. Um, I'm a strong believer in using uh, loops, especially with this sort of stuff. Uh, you can program your own hi-hats, but I find if you can get a sample that sounds a lot more sort of realistic as if uh, somebody's actually playing it on a, a drum kit, then if it sounds good, then then use it. And that was the same for the shaker loop as well. It just helps it uh, not sound so static. And then, as you can see, I kind of rearranged them to fit in there with the groove. Pretty simple. And then here we have some typewriter sounds. And they're, they're almost as like additional kind of hi-hats. I think it's a good idea uh, to use folly recordings where you can, um, as you end up with sounds that are quite unique and uh, they're just fun to mess around with. So on top of that, I've also got these. These also uh, more folly recordings. So this is a lot of just mechanical sort of sounds from a camera shutter, old phone, just a wee percussive hit. And then just started them around kind of randomly and then uh, played them over the beat until they sounded like they, they kind of fit in. That's pretty much it for the drums. Um, I'll just show you a few of the effects. I basically just kept them as clean as clean as I could. Uh, added a bit of EQ and convolution reverb uh, pretty much to all of them. Uh, the reverb is there um, almost always just to add a little bit of space and the presets that I usually went for were bedroom, family room and small room. And that's just to make it sound like it's being played like in a natural space, but um, not sound too washed out. So I'll try and um, just give you an example of how that sounds. Yeah, 
yeah, so just kept it nice and tight. And then I sent pretty much all these to a drum group and then just added a, a compressor to that just to glue the sounds together. And that's pretty much it for the drums. So we're taking a look at the bass now. I've got a few different patterns here. Uh, for the intro and bridge, just add these uh, single notes. And then for the verse, um, it was basically the same, but had a couple of notes in between, just walking between the, the chords. And then in uh, this part of the song, and towards the end, um, had even and more rhythm. And that was me just trying to emulate um, what what an actual bassist might play in a, a song when they kind of doodle about between notes and as opposed to just sticking to, you know, just the chords and sustained notes all the way through. Uh, it just adds a bit of extra rhythm and again makes it sound more lively. And the sounds I used for those, really very simple. Um, one was uh, just a sub bass, so that was just a sine wave. And then this one was a sample of a bass guitar. So that's just the one that comes with uh, FL Studio and layered them up together. And for the, the Ibanez sample, took away the sub because we didn't need any of that and added some uh, saturation just using uh, this guy. Uh, also in this part of the track, I also had this sound. This is a very simple uh, saw patch with a uh, filter envelope like that. And that was just copying the same notes. And that just added a bit more grip. It wasn't really necessary, but um, if you wanted something more electronic sounding, then you could uh, use that patch. Um, that's pretty much it covered for the bass. So now we're going to take a look at the many uh, chord sounds that we've got going on in the track. And I'll start off with this one. Just a nice dreamy sounding uh, Rhodes patch. Uh, so again, that was the, the one that comes with uh, labs. It's the free free one you can download from Spitfire. Um, and that was actually the basis for most of these sounds. Um, so I'll basically just record in, the, record in the notes like that. Or they might be uh, more like this. And then once I had the recordings, um, I could just go about editing them. And the advantage of um, having it as an audio file is you can chop it up and uh, create your own rhythms and it's just easier to work with. So this is the first one. And that was all just from that one sample. Uh, this is the other sample. see it's pitched down an octave and that was playing a similar sort of rhythm layered over the top of this and another layer added to that was just some white noise And on top of that, I also had this one here. So this was just from a, a VST. And I think it was the 3X, yeah. Um, so two sine waves, uh, the second is turned down uh, two octaves. And then just a really short um, ADSR.
and had a few um, effects on those, mainly just a bit of delay and using the growth speed to add like a sidechain effect. And then that gave it that uh, really short plucky, plucky sound. So without the effects. Now, oh, and that was that. And I also layered up those sounds in the intro with this uh, tom. So all together. And a final one over here, this is uh, just the same idea. So there are just a couple of examples of how uh, you can take your own recordings um, and just repurpose them and get a lot of cool different effects and sort of sounds um, as a way of building up textures within, um, you know, one sound as opposed to sticking to one VST or just one sample. And also did the similar thing with this one here. So that's just a flam of the same chord, probably on roads with loads of uh, reverb and delay. Cool, so what else we got? A little piano here. This is also from uh, Labs by Spitfire. It's a really nice felted piano. And finally, we'll take a look at the pluck sound. So that's this guy over here. So it's almost like that progressive housey kind of um, chord stab. That's made up of a couple of layers. Uh, so this one was just a bit of white noise. And I use that to kind of emulate the feedback that you would get off analog gear, just make it sound a bit a bit more interesting and, and natural. And to do that, uh, is a square wave and a sawtooth with a bit of white noise. Um, the first two were at the, both turned down an octave and had a bit of detune to add some uh, stereo to the sound. So taking a look at the ADSR, um, it's quite short, just to give it that kind of plucky sound. I didn't want the, the notes to uh, sustain too long. And very similar ADSR for the, the filter envelope. So we set that to SVF uh, low pass, add a bit of resonance, and then automated uh, the filter here. You could also do the same with the amount over here. keep it more, uh, keep it plucky. And then the effects that I had on them, um, this was just some tape emulation and that added a bit of uh, flutter and wow. And I think that was all that was doing. So I'll just turn that up to show you what it does. Again, just trying to get a bit more of that analog uh, sound and then some delay and reverb. So without the effects, a bit dry and static. Much better. And that's it for all those chord sounds. So now we'll take a look at the pads and strings. So we'll start off by taking a look at these two pads here. Uh, the first is from a sample from a trumpet. Or a French horn, maybe. Quite straightforward. Just looping that sample. 
and then add in a bit more tape, tape emulation. Uh, EQ to take out loads of the low end, make it sound real lo-fi, and then uh, this just pan the sound left and right uh, with a bit of reverb on the end. Uh, so without the effects, And the next one was a vocal pad. So that's the sample there. And I'll just start by taking off the effects. Copy that. Put that back down. And then just a bit of uh, auto compression, just to pump up the volume. Uh, a bit of EQ, again, taking away the extreme lows and highs. Um, this was uh, reverb and delay. Uh, a bit of distortion, gross beat to add a sidechain, and some reverb just to finish it all off. Uh, just so you guys know, when uh, I upload the FLP, I'll take off um, all these non-native uh, VSTs uh, so that when you open up, nothing will be missing and, and you can just add effects as you like. So over here we've got the strings, and I'll just run through some of the signs. So the first one is uh, Frozen Strings by Labs. That's another free VST you can download. Um, each of these have their own different textures and, and characteristics. Uh, this one I think is just the string section and that's the one that comes with FL Studio. He's that for the lower notes and then the, the violin for the high. So all together. Um, none of them are really playing the same note, they're all just playing harmonies of each other. Um, so it wasn't really necessary to, to double up the same notes on, on different instruments. And over here, uh, this is a violin part that a friend of mine actually played on another track of ours uh, that was able to, to drag in. Uh, I just changed the pitch to get it in the right key. Um, and these are only the really, like the only notes that I could actually use uh, that I thought would fit. Um, so I started off by just dragging the whole thing in and then playing it over this uh, pattern here until I found a few bits that sounded like they, they kind of worked. Oh, muted it. Actually sounds alright. As you can see here, there's the odd, odd note that doesn't doesn't quite work, but it's a, again just a, a case of trial and error and moving around until um, I had something that was kind of good. And all together, they sound like this. And on them, just had a bit of uh, reverb, and this is another tape emulation plugin. This is also free to download. And I'll just pump up uh, the sound effects to see what it does. Uh, same kind of idea as the other one. Whoops. And just to create more of like a lo-fi uh, sound. So I'll begin just by showing you the more basic uh, ARP sounds. This was just a clave. About as simple as it gets. And this was uh, was a sample from Maramba. Both of those just had a bit of reverb and delay on them. And over here, uh, this was a sample from a hang drum. I thought that sounded quite nice and uh, kind of similar to a, a square wave. 
in a way. Um, and that was just uh, with a bit of reverb and delay on it. And that's the first instrument that comes in uh, before the sort of climax of the song. Um, and then in comes the square up. Just playing the same note, uh, same notes. And if we take a look at that, just a really short um, envelope here for the volume and mod X filter taken down to around here with quite a lot of uh, resonance, just set to low pass. And then I automated the two of them. Like so. And the uh, waveforms were just uh, a square. That was one down one octave, and then a sawtooth uh, down two octaves. And then uh, played them together. Cool. And that is it for the ARPs. So I kind of created this in the the same method as I use for the, the strings and the violins. So started off with uh, the sample here. And this, all this is, is a short riff of like a, a scale. So that was in G major. Um, so I took it down uh, two semitones. So that was in the key of the song, which is uh, F. So that's down one, two. So I knew that notes, those notes, because this was in a, a major key, uh, it would fit. So I'll just play that over the, the piano. And also had some higher notes going on. So that was one sample. And also had this one, and that was going up uh, five semitones from the other. and just dragged uh, both of those samples into the playlist. So they would look like that. And again, just messed around with cutting them up into each of their notes, add in a couple of effects and delay and reverb, and then uh, seeing what I could come up with. this is a really fun way to make music um, and by taking this approach because it's so different from just playing in like an actual instrument or messing around with MIDI notes uh, you end up coming up with stuff that uh, you normally you know would never think of um, and it can uh, really inspire other kind of melodies and harm harmonies to come out of it and it's just a fun way to do it I think um, so that was the idea behind that So the vocals here, um, done in exactly the same vein as the, the strings and guitar. Uh, it's just a matter of choosing a sample, um, chopping it up and seeing where it would fit and what would sound good. Uh, so I think before I even put the, the samples in, I just added a few effects. So um, that's some distortion, delay, EQ and some reverb quite a lot of EQ so we just got like a really narrow bandwidth of uh, of sound so without the effects it sounds like this and with all the effects so starting with the distortion delay EQ and reverb Um, you could use whatever vocal sample you want. Um, in this case, I was using uh, an Aretha, Aretha, Aretha Franklin tune. Now, finally, we've got uh, just a couple of effects to go over. Uh, so the first is uh, just this sample, uh, just a vinyl crackle. 
which is pretty common in in uh, a lot of organic house, lo-fi, that kind of thing. And then this guy over here. And it was super fun to make them. And it was just using one plugin. So I'll demonstrate on the guitar here. Just find that in the mixer. And it's a free plugin, plugin called uh, Frequency Echo. Uh, it's from Valhalla. And I'll just load up a new one and just show you straight from the start how to use it. Okay, so that is a freshie. Uh, I'll have the mix around here, maybe a wee bit more. Quite a lot of feedback. And then you just go to town on this and I would record that into uh, an Edison. So just hit record, press play. And that's pretty much it. Once I had uh, a few like weird little bits, um, we just dropped them in. So this is the one that I came up with and also added some uh, delay and reverb to that. It sounds pretty sweet and it's a, a really easy way of just adding some, some cool like uh, little effects and stuff into your track and just dotted a few of them around uh, the kind of breaks and and where the song transitions to start uh, something a bit more interesting. Um, and that pretty much covers it for the track. Uh, if there's other bits that I missed out, let me know. Or if there's any plugins or samples missing in the FLP, uh, just leave a comment and I'll sort it out. So that pretty much sums it up for this episode. Uh, as always, I'll leave links in the description for all the free VSTs that I use, the project file, uh, the full track if you'll listen to that or download it. Um, if you do have any questions about the video or anything we've covered, please let me know in the comments. And I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, see ya.